For those of you that are here today, uh, you know that we have been creating an atmosphere where when the word is preached and the word goes forth, power shows up while it's happening. And so I believe that while you are receiving this, God is going to do something in this room that will change you forever. If you believe it, say yes. Turn with me to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Now, last week, we talked through the Christmas narrative and dug some truth out of that story. How many were blessed by the approach we took to that last week? Uh, some different aspects that we looked at that. Now, listen, I, if I got two grandmothers that will holler at me, I'm at home. So I don't need, just give me one that will holler at me. Uh, so the week before that, I, I began teaching uh, on the move that I believe that we are shifting into as a body and as a church. Now, again, as a reminder for you, we are not having a New Year's Eve service here. So this is your word for your next. Today is your New Year's Eve. Uh, and we didn't continue that last week. And so I'm going to refer Fresh your minds just a little bit, but not too much because we've got to move further into this. Now, remember, I refreshed you on what God spoke to us back in the summer, which was that God was ready to manifest what he had in mind about you. And he was going to do it by way of the dominion of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we received that revelation, actually, interestingly enough, from the Christmas narrative uh, when Mary is told that she will bring forth a son. And what does she ask? She says, how can these things be since I know not a man? The angel answers her and says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest shall episkiazo you, shall overshadow you, literally meaning to envelop you in a haze of brilliance. I can't even say that without getting excited in my belly. Somebody say he's going to envelop me in a haze of brilliance. So, so Mary in this moment is manifesting God's mind about her and, and get it, she's doing it without performing what was naturally necessary for there to be a birthing. Now, she said, I don't know. In other words, I don't know a man. Uh, in other words, I haven't done what is necessary here to see that in my life. And the angel said, don't even worry about that because over in the era you're about to step in, manifest is not by works glory to God it is by the Holy Spirit I could run right there and she says nevertheless woo -wee, be it unto me now the moment she accepts it and the moment she believes it bam manifestation starts happening in here how do I know that she runs to Elizabeth's house and Elizabeth says blessed is she who believed for now there shall be a performance now I could flip this laptop at your head right there so I need you to help me holler across the room to somebody and say there shall be a performance no I say it like a Pentecostal there shall be a performance in fact, lift your hands right where you are. I decree and declare over you in the 22nd year that the curtain is about to lift on your life and God is about to take center stage in the narrative of your story. There shall be a performance. So in other words, because Mary believed the word of God <laughs> and accepted it, what the angel told her by way of the Holy Spirit. Now, now I, want, I went over this and I need you to get this embedded in you. Get this embedded in what's happening to you. Because she believed the word of God and because she believed what the angel by way of the Holy Spirit said to her about herself. Because she accepted what God just said to her about her, even though she did not in her flesh understand how what he just said was going to happen, and even though she knew, man, I feel this thing stirring in me already, and even though she knew that she had done nothing to qualify for what she was about to receive, when she said yes to what God said, the performance began. 
Then I told you that I heard that the word for 22 here at All Nations South for us what, what was a word that is uh, over church but under Doug. And, and it was the word breakthrough, but it was not in the way that we would normally choose to do that. The breakthrough that was coming to this body was going to be a sudden bursting of advanced revelation. In other words, God was going to bring a moment of advanced revelation knowledge in the church that was going to empower us to finally break through or to finally get past previous lines of resistance. You remember that? Now, I said all that because I got to get to two things today and I can't get stuck. Everything I said to you just now, I said two weeks ago. So go run back. They're going to post it uh, on our YouTube and I want you to review that. But, but I, I'm re doing a bit of review to catch everybody in. And the reason I do this is because I don't want anybody to miss this. I don't want anybody to be left out of this if they want to participate in it. And so I looked at John 16 and it's important to you because this is where where this year God is getting ready to get this thing cracking on a serious level. If you don't know what cracking is, just ask somebody under 40. They'll let you know what cracking is. Uh, but this thing is going to get cracking on another level. And, and I believe it's going to be like, for, for a picture's sake, it's going to be like a wave coming in. How many of you have ever seen surfers before? And, and when a wave is coming in, a surfer is sitting and waiting on the wave. But if you're not on the board before the wave, wave hits you just get beat up by the wave but if you happen to be on the board when the wave arrives all you got to do when the wave comes in is just ride the wave and so what I'm trying to do on the last Sunday of this year is get you on your board because a wave is coming would you holler at somebody and say get on your board get on your board all right so John 16 let's go there I believe while you're turning there that the church is about to come into the most glorious season that we have seen in this generation. I, I, and how do I know that? Because hell just went on all out assault. And when hell goes on assault, it's not because hell has plans, it's because hell is nervous. <laughs> There is a birthing coming now. And this is why the Holy Spirit is beginning to reveal some things by way of his word. That, that Greek word there for revelation is apocalypsos, which literally means to uncover. <laughs> you cannot uncover what is not already there. So revelation is not something that God is coming up with. Revelation is something that God pre-planned that he's finally showing you. So he's uncovering what he's been talking about the whole time. I got to read, Lord Jesus. Jesus is speaking in John chapter 16 and verse 5 and says, But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you, talking to his disciples, ask me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, we're talking about the physical personhood of Jesus. For if I do not go away, the helper, the parakletos, meaning strengthener, advocate, counselor, intercessor, standby, one called alongside to help. Uh, the, the, if I don't go away, the counselor, the one called to help you, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Are you with me? In another place, he's called another comforter. Or, or you remember when I told you it's alas parakletos, which literally means he's just like me in every detail, but still separate from me. <laughs> still distinct from me. So the Holy Spirit is Jesus in his unlimited form now here for you. You got it? So he's the spirit of the father. I can't get stuck there now. Verse 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I taught all of that at the beginning of this month. I still have many things to say to you. But you can't bear them now. Now, again, I need to put a pin right here because Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord, just said, I'm leaving here without saying everything I wanted to say. 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to depart from you and you haven't got the whole story. I, I have some other things to say to you. Do you see that there? However, somebody say however. however. Verse 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come. Now, I love the fact that Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life is that what the bible says so watch this he says i have more to say to you you can't bear them now you can't handle them now and the reason you can't handle them now is because at this point you're not yet born again they have yet to be made new again and so their spirits are not able yet to be able to handle certain spiritual truth he said however when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth now, this is so important, and I need you to lean here and learn here. He calls him the spirit of truth. He says he's going to guide you into all truth. And Jesus said, I am the truth. He's the spirit of truth. He's going to guide you into truth. I am the truth. No, you missed it. He calls him the spirit of truth. He says he will guide you into all truth. And then Jesus says, I am the truth. So if there is a leading of the Spirit of God, it is going to be leading you in the understanding and the revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of truth will never lead you away from truth. No, 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 no. Jesus is the truth. Say that with me. Jesus is the truth. So if they tell you it's the Holy Spirit, but it's not pointing you to Jesus, if it's not leading you to Jesus, if it's not showing you things about Jesus, if it's not revealing more to you about Jesus, that is not the Spirit of God. If it's not revealing to you more about him and his finished work, that's very important. Because where the Holy Spirit is going to begin leading you, he's going to begin revealing to you things about Jesus that Jesus didn't have a chance to tell you. I got more to tell you about me, but you can't handle them now. So I'm going to send you another version of me who can now tell you about me. You got that? Uh, I'll say it like this. Uh, so, so before I'm a preacher, I was a musician. So I played piano and uh, mostly played by ear, uh, but, but I learned firstly by way of reading music. And so if you're reading music, you understand that you have treble clef and bass clef. Am I, am I right? So it, it's the lines. You may not know music, but you've probably seen the lines with the spaces. And so there's five lines and spaces up here. There's five lines and spaces down here. One is treble, one, uh, y'all ain't no musicians. I can tell, I'm the, anyways, y'all know what I'm talking about, the lines on the paper? Y'all got that, right? Okay, all right, so, so, uh, by, way of the lines on the paper you understand that the notes on the lines tell you what to play but if you read music where it gets confusing for some people is there will be notes outside of the lines There's notes that aren't in the lines, but I don't understand how to play those notes if I don't first understand the relationship of the lines. So you got lines and you got spaces and written in music, you've got the bass clef, it's A-C-E-G, and then G-B-D-F-A are the lines and the spaces. If you're going to play sheet music, you've got to understand going in that at some point when you get out of elementary learning, there's going to be notes outside of the lines. So I've got to understand the space relationship between the lines to be able to understand what to play when I get out here. Why? Because out here, there are are no lines out here there are no spaces so to recognize the note I got to first understand the relationship I'm about to make it plain for you the word of God is the lines and the spaces the oh God the Bible is the line and the space 
The, I, I said the Bible is the line in the space. What are they teaching you? They're teaching you relationship. Mm. They are teaching you how this thing works and how this thing flows. But as you follow the Holy Ghost, he's going to at some point, once you understand the relationship, start throwing you stuff outside the lines. Oh, no, y'all not hearing me. And it's important because if you don't understand the lines, then you're going to hear things that are outside of it and not be able to discern what it is that's being played. Are you catching what I'm saying? I'm telling you that your Bible is there to teach you how this works. But there is some things beyond the Bible that the Holy Spirit is trying to say to you. Whoa! Now, now you got it. Amen. All right. So, so the Holy Spirit, it's important. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth is going to throw you truth outside the lines once you understand the relationships. Amen. So now it's important because people now are beginning to come up in the body of Christ and, and, and they are calling themselves prophets. Now, y'all can still talk to me, okay? And because they can tell you your bank account, and because they can tell you your address, and because they know the number of your P.O. box, people will flock to prediction. Oh, glory to God. Now, now, there are some things in that that are evidence to the unbeliever, but some of that stuff is witchcraft. Some of that stuff is familiar spirits. Witches can tell you your P.O. address. Oh, Lord. Y'all been entertained by too many Facebook lives. <laughs> Witches can tell you your son's name. All of that is history. All I need is Google to look. Y'all ain't playing. Y'all no. The, the, the indication that a man or a woman is listening and moving by the Spirit of God is are they pointing to Jesus? Hear me. Are they, listen, are they telling you things that are, are, are disclosures about Jesus? Because he, oh Lord, y'all not going to like this, but he is the spirit of truth. He never said he's the spirit of facts. No, y'all, no, 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 no. He is the spirit of truth. Facts are not even in the realm of prophecy. He speaks truth even if facts contradict it. Truth is the word. No, y'all, no. The word is truth. No, no. I need you to holler at somebody. Say, the word is truth. And he is the spirit that leads you into greater understanding of Jesus, his finished work, and the word. Who's going to get married next week is a fact. Your bank account number is a fact. Your credit card pin is a fact. Who your mama was is a fact. But, oh, father, none of that is truth. No, no, no. None of that is truth because he said truth is the word. That's the only thing. Truth is the word. And when you get him, he will lead you into all truth. And I don't know who that's for, but you need to wake up in this season. And to be honest, I, just before we go into 22, I take authority over witchcraft wrapped in Christianity that has hindered some of you and given you word curses and changed what your perception of prophecy is. God is going to reveal truth to you. Verse 13, glory to God. When the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own. Now remember that word authority is in italics, which means it's not in the original Greek. He will not speak on his own. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So Jesus said, whenever the Holy Spirit comes, He's going to tell you what he heard. He's going to tell you. So, so in one sense, the Holy Spirit is the divine DVR of heaven. 
The Holy Spirit is heaven's DVR. Please catch that. Your DVR can't record anything that has not already played. So the Holy Spirit is just giving you a playback of a conversation that has already played out in heaven. And this is why sometimes, for those of you that are listening to the Spirit and moving in the Spirit and have this discerning of spirits and prophetic uh, just, just way that you move, this is why sometimes, you'll know what I'm talking about, when he's communicating with you, you don't know if you heard it or saw it or thought it, or, 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 or what sense it was. You, you don't know if it was something you could taste or something you could see or something that you could hear. or so, You just somehow know that you knew, the, which is why David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He was letting us know. I have no idea what it is that's communicating this to me, but I just know that I know that he is good. It, it, it's the way that it works. He said he's going to tell you of things to come, and let me just take that out of the realm that does not mean that he's going to give you lottery numbers God oh father God that, 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 what does telling you who's going to win the Super Bowl in February have to do with your next leading of truth the Holy Spirit is not here to help you in Vegas the Holy Spirit is here to reveal things to you about your purpose, about God's plan, about your destiny, about your family, and about what you have spiritual authority over. If you get in it, just comment yes, because it's silence of the lambs in here. Verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Now, we covered that two weeks ago. Jesus says he will take of what is mine. The Holy Spirit will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And then he says in verse 15, all things that the Father has are mine. Oh, Father God. The Holy Spirit is going to take of what is Jesus and declare it unto you. And then he, Jesus said, everything the Father has is what is mine. The reason why he says this this time is because the things that he is speaking of at that present moment only belong to him and the Father. Those things in that moment only belong to him. But after the resurrection, what he just said belongs to him and the Father now belongs to you. So when he says, I'm declaring things to you that are mine, what he's telling you is, post-resurrection, I'm telling you what's yours. I'm telling you what belongs to you. I'm telling you what belongs to, oh God. After he is resurrected, gone back to heaven and seated next to the Father, all things that are his are yours. What is his? All that is the Father's. Everything that belongs to the Father now belongs to you. Oh, y'all don't know when to shout. Small group January 1 on when to shout because y'all don't know when to shout. All things that belong to the Father now belong to you. You want to know why you're quiet? Because you're still broke, you're still depressed, you're still heavy, you're still upset, and now I'm telling you everything God got is yours. You're quiet because you're mad. 1 Corinthians 3.21, put it up on the screen so people know that I'm not a heretic. 1 Corinthians 3.21, Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Okay, let's go further. Verse 22. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world. He said the world is yours. No, y'all not talking to me. He said the world is yours. Or life or death or things present or things to come. All, oh my God. All are yours. Things present are yours. Things to come are yours. So the Holy Spirit is going to take of what is mine and he's going to show it to you, which means he's going to show you who I am. And here's what you need to understand. I've been trying to get this to you for months. As he's revealing to you what Jesus is, Jesus just told you he's also revealing to you what you are. No, 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 no. As he reveals things about me, once you get on the other side of resurrection, you're going to understand he's been talking about you. 
while he was talking about me. Because as we've covered for months now, you and Jesus are one. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You and, you and, no, you don't believe me. At least believe your Bible. As he is, so are we. In this, this world. I said in this world. In this world. So the, the, the same thing that is true about Jesus, the Holy Spirit says, is also true about you. And so he's going to take what belongs to the Father, and he's going to take what belongs to Jesus, because he's really trying to show you what belongs to you, and then now he says, once you find it out, I want you to show the world. All right. All things the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Let's go back to John 16. Verse 16. A little while and you will not see me. And again a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Now we hit that again. That can't be talking about the rapture because he said you're going to see me when I go to him. Not when I come back. You'll see me when I go to him. And it was quiet last time I said it too. Uh, so what he's saying is, in a little while, you see me physically. In a little while, you're not going to see me physically. But actually, when you stop seeing me physically, you're actually going to see me for the first time. <laughs> that is when you will actually begin to see revelation, uncover. That's when you will begin to see who I really am. Are you with me? Verse 17, then some of his disciples said among themselves, what, what, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while you will see me because I go to the Father. Therefore, they said, what is this he says? A little while. They're just repeating. I mean, they're confused. They're just repeating themselves. Verse 19, now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while and you will not see me, and again, a little while and you will see me. Now remember, remember, what is the context of this conversation? He's talking about when he physically leaves and the Holy Spirit comes. That's the context. Don't take it out of that. So for time's sake, jump down to verse 23. He says, in that day. In what day? In the day that I am no longer physically present here and the Holy Spirit is functioning in the earth. In that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you until now. Are y'all seeing this? Until, he said, you have not functioned like this to this point. In other words, here's what's happening, and this is what's happening again now. I am announcing to you a brand new mode of operation. I'm announcing to you a brand new mode of function. Once I leave, your function is going to change. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your, oh God, that your joy may be full. Look at what he just said. He said, if you ever tap into what I'm talking about right now, your joy can't help but go up. If you get this, this is a reservoir of joy. And this is where we left off last time. I said some things that I got to get to you further. When he says, you shall ask, he said, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Everybody say, ask. ask. Say, ask. ask. When he says, you shall ask in that day, write it down again. The word ask here is the Greek word, aieto. A-I-E-T-O. Aieto. It means, oh God, to require, demand, or decree. Whatever you require in my name. In that day, what day? When the Holy Spirit is functioning in you, you will require of me nothing. Nothing. 
So, so, so let, let, let's read this whole thing again. In that day, you will require nothing of me. I say to you, whatever you require of the Father that my name covers, that my nature, my character, my authority covers. Again, that word name is an onoma, meaning nature, character, and authority. Whatever you require of the Father that is covered by my nature, my character, and my authority, he will give it to you. Look, keep reading. Until now, you have required nothing in my name. Require and you shall receive. Now, now watch, just so you understand, remember this word, ask. It's also used in several other places. Just write these down. I'm not going to hit all these again. 1 Corinthians 1, Go study these yourself. Luke 23, 23. Mark 15, 6. Acts 13, 21. 1 Corinthians 1, Luke 23, 23, Mark 15, 6, Acts 13, 21. It's the same Greek word. And when you look at those, it changes your view of what Jesus was saying when he said, whatsoever you ask. The word is not what we thought it was. And I believe the word ask was put here in English because the translators were scared to actually write what it actually meant because of our religious mentality. I'm going to look at one to prove it to you and you can look at the rest throw Luke 23 23 up on the screen but they were insistent demanding with loud voices that he be crucified that word demanding there is the same word Aito Aito they were they were insistent Aitoing that he be crucified they were iatoing that he be crucified. In other words, the writer said they were de- when they were demanding Jesus be crucified, they were asking. What were they saying? Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. You can't tell me they said, Pilate, it'd be cool if you would kill him for us. Pilate, if you wouldn't mind, crucify him. The word here says demanding. They were demanding that Jesus die. When they were crying out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Same word. Whatever you, whatever you demand. No. Whatever you demand. Whatever you, oh God. I demand that you be healed. I, no, 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 no. I command you to live. I require breakthrough in 2022. Now, I'm going to show you this, because if you follow the apostles' ministry after the resurrection, you see their progression into this. In the beginning, you hear them say things like, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up. Later on, you see Paul say, stand up on your feet. Because he starts moving in to what the real position is, which is an understanding of who you are and not just who the man Jesus was. No, 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 no. You see see Peter say things like, Jesus makes you well. It's a change in nature. You'll get it later. I got to move. So here's what Jesus said in John 16. Up until now, You have demanded nothing. Up until now, you've been coming to me asking me to do things for you. Up until now, when the wind and waves show up, you've been waking me up. No, 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 no. I was asleep and you woke me up. I was asleep. And you woke me up. What you didn't realize is that even then, because I was in the boat, if you would have stood up, the wind and the waves would have obeyed you because of the authority that I was allowing you to walk in. That's why he turns around and asks them, where is yours? Where's your faith? Oh, Father God. 
Where, where is your faith? Y'all are living off my faith. Where is yours? I need you to ask two people, where is yours? No, ask them, where is yours? Up until now, you have demanded nothing in my nature, character, and authority. Now, he says, do like I did. Demand like I, don't ask me to do it. I'm about to leave. Y'all go do it. And, and, and you know what? When you do it, your joy is going to go crazy. And he says, my joy is your strength. I'll give you more strength. Oh, Father God. I'll give you more strength once you start flexing. Flex, oh God. Flex and I'll give you strength. Let the weak say I am. So oh no, y'all don't talk. Oh, Father God. And so when you get what he is saying, he says you can get the same results in your house that I got in my lifetime. That you can get the same results from your hands that I got from my, it's a change in your disposition. Which means now a few bills can't keep you up late at night anymore. Now a bad diagnosis can't launch you into 10 days of depression. Not anymore because I understand now I'm something different now. Would you tell somebody like you know it, I'm something different now. Come on, type that here. I'm something different now. I am not the same thing I was. I am a new creature. So anyway. What is Jesus saying? He is announcing the, the, to them the reality of a shift of operation and function by way of his departure and the coming of the Holy Spirit. If you got it, say yes. yes. So he said the, the coming of the Spirit, it's the coming of the Spirit of God that is going to live in you. And it's going to demand that for you to see results, you're going to have to change your flow. Mm. For you to see results, you're going to have to change your flow. Now, now we can see why the church has been stuck. Now we can see why we've been begging at altars and not seeing in life. Uh, we, we've been stuck going to Jesus. Y'all not know. I said we've been stuck in the cycle of going to Jesus, asking him to do things he gave us the power to do. So our Christianity don't work, and simultaneously our joy is low, our depression is high, our strength is waning, and we feel like we are at the beckoning of life circumstances, and if God don't come to see about us, ain't nothing going to change. I got news for you, God can't come see about you, because God has never left you. I know you're mad, it's all right. Uh, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwell. Well, when God shows up, what are you talking about? He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never look away from you. If his eye is on the sparrow, I know he's watching you. Somebody shout bad doctrine. He, he showed up when you showed up. No, 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 no. God walked in when you walked in. Simultaneously, God was there the whole time. But when you got there, God had the elements he needed to make a work happen. Because y'all still working on this, but God can't do nothing here without the interaction of mankind. Man has been given dominion in the earth. Let man have dominion in the earth. So by God's own decree, which is the only thing he can't do is lie. By God's own decree, he said if something's going to happen here, it's going to be by who had dominion here. God set up the earth to be partnership with man. Amen. I got to go for it. This is all old stuff. So now, what is the shift in operation? Because after the resurrection, after he leaves, after he's seated at the right hand of the Father, now the followers of Jesus become new creatures. Somebody say new creatures. Is that something completely new? I don't have time to dig that there. But, but he says, we will become ministers. We're going to keep reading. 
That word there is literally administers, not, not administrators. It, it, it's diakonos, literally meaning ministers or administers of the new covenant and of the spirit. That's your Bible. Go to 2 Corinthians 3. Y'all okay? If you're bored, shout amen. Oh, man. Y'all doing good. All right. So now, uh, now li listen, while you're turning there, 2 Corinthians 3, I'm, I'm taking my time here, and I'm trying to not get as excited as I want to in my belly right now because I want you to get this, and I don't want you to get lost in church sauce that you don't hear what I'm saying. So uh, are you with me? Why the change in operation? Because after the resurrection, the followers of Jesus have now become new creatures. They have accepted the finished work, and they become ministers. I'm about to make this make sense to you. Of the new covenant and ministers of the Spirit. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 4, I'm going to show you what I just said to you, and then I'm going to show you what this requires of you. Lord, this is good food to me. Verse 4, and we have such trust through Christ toward God. In other words, what we're preaching to you, we're preaching because we have trust in Christ. This is what Christ has revealed to us. Watch. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency whoo, is from God. He said, lest you think that I am preaching to you something of myself. He says, I want you to understand I'm not even talking about myself. <laughs> what I'm telling you has come from God to me. The Spirit of God told me this about me and about you. Our sufficiency is of God, verse 6, who also made us sufficient. That Greek word is hiakonos. Which means, watch, ample, competent, fit, able, worthy. Leave that scripture up there. In other words, God has made us competent, able, and worthy as ministers of the new covenant. Ministers, again, administers, administers. We have been, oh God. Oh, in other words, those of us that have been born again have been given the responsibility of administering the new covenant to people and administering the spirit. No, you're missing it. When you go to a hospital, they, they hook you up to an IV, right? And, and, and they are, when they do that, administering something to your body. The, the tube is the mechanism of the administering. Oh, my God. They are bringing something into your body that unless they were to administer it to you, it would not get in there. Father God, the Holy Spirit is the tube between the Father and your spirit. He, he said, he that is joined to the Lord, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, is one spirit. So the Holy Spirit then is constantly administering to you the new covenant and the spirit. Constantly administering to you the new covenant, not the old one, the new one. And he's constantly administering the spirit to you. And so now you have been made an administer to whoever needs what's being administered to you. I'm constantly administering the new covenant to you. And I'm going to send you people who I want you to administer what's being administered to you. I want you to give them your medicine. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I, I want you to give them what I'm giving to you. You have been made an administer, which means don't ask God to heal them. I've been administering to you. You administer. No, no. Don't ask God. No, you administer. Uh, the tube to you is the Holy Spirit. How I get them on the tube is by you. You, oh God, you are, see, see, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Don't ask me 
to give you what is already being administered to you. Oh, God, you administer what has already been invested in you, and I know it's there because I put it there. No, y'all missed that. God said, I know you got it to give, Pastor. I don't have anything left to pour. God said, you alive. I know it's there because I put it there, which means if you're empty, it's because you're pouring the wrong thing. Oh, you out of strength? That's because you were pouring you. You weren't administer. Oh, Father God. Which is why when you get in situations, you ask for backup. Now watch, let's keep reading. I'm having a good time. He's made us administers of the new covenant. Watch this, don't miss this. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. With a capital S, so we're talking about the Holy Spirit, not your spirit. The Holy Spirit. So when he says he's made us ministers, administers, not of the letter. Oh, God, y'all about, about to put me in, in Facebook jail for this. Not of the letter. That Greek word there is grammatos, from which we get our English word grammar, grammatical. It literally means, Lord, I'm about to explode. It means he has made us ministers, not of the writing. Alvin, I'm about to mess with your brain right here. Not of the writing, not of the book. The word literally means the book. The full definition is plural learning or the complete composite of the previous learning, which means we are not administers of the previous writing. We are, oh, y'all not hearing me. We are not ministers simply of the book. And see, here's our problem, is we've got a country full of people that can quote the book, but don't understand the revelation of the Spirit, which means you can preach principles, but it's void of power because you don't know the intent. Oh, okay. When the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the word was with God and the word was God. The Greek word there in the beginning was the word. That word we understand is the word logos. Now stay with me because we've been taught that logos meant the written word and rhema meant the spoken word. That's how I was taught anyways. Uh, the, 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 this was the written word. This is the spoken word, the living word. But written word for logos is a major reduction of what that word actually means. Oh, this blesses me. Look it up. It not only means the written word, the word logo means not simply what is written, but it means, watch, the thought, the computation, the understanding behind what is written. No, pay attention. It does not just mean what is written. It means the thoughts behind the writing. So, 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 you do this all the time, you just don't know it. You do this all the time when you speak. You, you just do it subconsciously and you don't recognize that you do it. Uh, but, but before you speak, there is always a computing that's going on inside. Uh, your brain is deciding what to speak before you speak it to make sure that it comes out in a way that you are communicating what your mind is actually thinking. Oh, Father God. And by the time what you thought hit your vocal cords, this computation has already occurred, and it's happening so quickly that you don't even know it's happening. So when you say what you say, you don't contemplate all the learning behind what made you able to say that. Because now what you say comes by instinct. Which is why when you don't want to speak quickly, what do you do? You get quiet and we say, think before we speak. Let me make sure I say this the right way. Now, now I know some of us in here know what that is. Let me go and pause for three seconds and make sure I say what I actually want to say and not what's about to come out. Okay, it's all right. So, so here's what God is saying. Everything I wrote, there's a computation behind it. 
Everything I wrote, there were thoughts behind what I wrote. I said this. Oh, hear me. But in what I said, there are a thousand thoughts. No, lean in there. There were a thousand thoughts that went into what was written. There were dialogues and discussions and internal conversations. How many of you have ever said something and had a conversation inside yourself before you said it? Don't you dare say that word to out, out loud to them. Don't you, don't you dare add that extra explicative. Glory to God. In that sentence, should I say that or should I not say that? God is saying, I did the same thing. So when he speaks or when he writes, there are millions of thoughts in those sentences. So, so this is why he said, I know the thoughts I have towards you. I said some things, but even in what I said, there were more thoughts behind what I said. So when I give you the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the book, please hear me. Not only do the words come, the thoughts come. Outside the lines. When I give you the Holy Spirit, not only do you have the, the lines, I give you the thoughts that are outside the lines. This is why meditation on God's word is so important. Because when you begin to meditate on the word, you begin to literally hear thoughts about what it is you're meditating on. And you think those are your thoughts. No. What you are hearing is the thoughts behind the words. Oh, God. You are hearing, when you meditate on the word, you are hearing the thoughts behind what you just read. So this is why, this is why he said, I have so many thoughts that, 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 are, that are about you and I, I consistently contemplate about you. That's why he said, if I could possibly number them, they would be like the sand on the seashore because I have so many thoughts behind what I said. And if you get the Holy Spirit, he'll reveal to you not just what I said, but what I was thinking when I said it. He, he, he says, there's not enough books to express to you how much I love you and how, much, uh, how, how many ways I'm going to get your family through and how, how many ways I can heal you and how many ways, there aren't enough books to tell you how many ways I can get you what you need. There aren't enough books to tell you how many ways I can heal your body of things doctors say can't get healed. There aren't enough books to be able to hold all the thoughts that I have behind the words that I get. You're not hearing the Father right now. He says, I have I have a million ways to prosper you. I have a million ways to heal you. I have a million ways to open doors for you. And this is what he means when he said the letter kills. He said if all you do is read God's word to people, but behind that word you don't convey his thoughts, you, you don't have his mind behind his decree, you don't have his heart behind his word, if you, don't, if you give them what I say but don't have my heart when you say it, Lord Jesus, if what you preach to people is sending them to a hell I didn't plan for them, you have my words, but you're not of my spirit. See, we have been made ministers not simply of the writing, but of the thoughts behind the writing. Now, this is going to take some digging for some of you, but if you got what I just said, that changes your whole operation now. That changes your whole function now because we have been made ministers, not of the book. We've been made ministers of the Spirit who gave us the book. Father God, tell your neighbor, I know it's a lot to think through. Say, just take a deep breath. Because this is why the world has rejected our declaration. Because we have displayed letter without intent. Book without heart. Understanding without feeling. We've quoted scriptures without his mind. My God. And God, hear me here. South, take this. God is raising up a people 
who can not only quote his verses but can speak his mind through the verses. And God, he's about to raise a people up. He's going to do it even in this house. And he's going to do it through some of you that are in this room and on this live right now. A people that will not just convey his word, but his thoughts and his hearts behind the word. Where does that come from? How do I talk what I can't read? Jesus told you, I have many things to say to you. A whole bunch of stuff I want to tell you behind what's already been said. And, and you do not have the capacity to hear it. But if you will get in front of me with the Holy Ghost and start seeking, the Holy Spirit is going to explain it all to you. And then you'll be seeing what natural eyes can't see, hearing what natural ears can't hear. Start playing. Last thing, I hope you can lean into this. Because what I'm talking to you about right now, and you need to go back and catch everything through this. We're going to dig through it for a few weeks. But what I'm talking to you about is not just a historical context. It's happening on another level right now. Uh, the, the, if you can lean into this, this, what I'm talking to you about is who you are becoming now. What I'm talking to you about right now is why you had to relieve the religious organization you came from. Because God is trying to make you not just a minister of the letter, but a minister of his spirit. It is these men and women that will shake nations. It is these men and women that will change communities. And remember, he said he's going to make us ministers of the new covenant, which means that we are not preachers of the old one. Hear me. We are not preachers of the old one. The old one, if you're taking notes, write this down. The old covenant is for instruction, not imitation. We have not been called to imitate the Old Testament. And we have a ton of preaching that gives us examples for new covenant life from old covenant characters like David. There are things that have been preached from his life as examples of faith. Can I hurt your feelings? David is not your example of new covenant faith. You're not hearing me. David is not your example of new covenant faith. Neither is Elijah. Neither is Elisha, neither is Samuel, neither is Isaiah. If you imitate their faith, you are imitating the wrong covenant. No, you hear what I'm saying. I know you fool. If you're imitating their faith, you're imitating the wrong covenant. And if you imitate the wrong covenant, you can't get results from the new one. Jesus demonstrated this when he had a city that was rejecting him and two disciples came James and John because they had just rejected Jesus and they said do you want us to call down fire from heaven and Jesus said I'm paraphrasing wrong covenant boys wrong covenant he is written right this you don't know what spirit you're of translation wrong covenant that's Elijah stuff. That ain't this covenant. This covenant ain't never called you to call down fire on anybody. You are operating through an old system. So verse 7 and I'm done. But if the ministry of death, look at what Paul just called the old covenant. If the ministry of death Written and engraved on stones was glorious. What, what is biblical death? Separation. He said, if you're preaching old covenant, you are just preaching how to interact in separation. If you're giving us Old Testament theology as New Testament doctrine, all you're doing is teaching us how to live separate. Which is why it don't apply to you no more. Why? Because you are no longer separated. I and Jesus are one. 
So old covenant theology don't even apply to me. It's instruction, but not imitation. Are you catching that? So the children of Israel could not look. If, if the ministry of death was glorious, verse 8. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Look at what he called the new covenant. The ministry of the Spirit. The new covenant is the ministry of the Spirit. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect. I feel your Holy Ghost. Because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use boldness of speech. We talk like people from another world now. Unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so the children of Israel could not look uh, steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day when Moses is read a veil stays. Verse 16, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Now you thought he was just making a statement. He just changed the game. He said, now the Lord is the Spirit. I've been the Lord here, but I'm leaving. The Lord that is here now is the Spirit. So look back at what he said in verse 16. When one turns to the Spirit, the veil is taken away. No, no, no. Listen. When one turns to the Spirit as Lord, the veil is taken away. What is that veil? Pull that last verse up there, Deanna. Hebrews chapter 10. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. He said, when you turn to the Spirit as Lord, the flesh of Jesus is moved out of the way. Because y'all thought that I was doing what I was doing as a man. I didn't do what I did as Jesus. I did what I did because I was Jesus filled with the Spirit. And when you turn to the Spirit as Lord, the flesh is taken away and the Spirit is revealed. What was being veiled by the flesh of Jesus? The Holy Spirit. He said, when you turn to him as Lord, you're going to finally see that it wasn't Jesus doing the miracles at all. It was the Spirit the whole time. And the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Now, so when you now make your life being led by the Spirit. No longer do we look to Jesus for miracles. We look to the Spirit that's in me. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Everything you need is not in the man Jesus because he's finished. Everything you need is in the Spirit who is here that is now Lord. Jesus is Lord, but he said in this shifting, the Holy Spirit is now Lord here. Make him your leader, and the flesh can't hold you. Make him your leader, and I'll fill you with what made me me. Oh, God, hear me. I'll give you the thing that made me me. And now you can become the body of Christ. What did he say when he said that? Now y'all get to be me. And you get to be me when you make him Lord. 
I'm telling you this to let you know that we have overcomplicated this. It's not just about, about making sure that you have everything memorized. It's not just about doctrinal understanding and you need it. It's not just about theological foundation and you need it. The point of the new covenant is, is the spirit your Lord. Are you being led by the spirit? What's the last thing he said? Those that are led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. I'll make you my son when you follow his leading. In 2022, God is going to pull you out of looking at the flesh of Jesus for answers. And he's going to make you look at what the veil being torn revealed. When that veil was torn, the spirit became your Lord. Father, I'm asking you in this moment, that you would give us a revelation, an uncovering, a revealing of what the veil is covering. Father, forgive us for operating all this time in old covenant mind. You have made us new covenant, you covenant sons of God. You have made us new covenant sons of God. Father, I thank you that in the tearing of the veil, you gave us you. Not just as our savior, you gave us you as our activity. I'm asking you over the next 12 months to stir what has been veiled within us. Come on, just begin to pray in your heavenly language. Stir what has been veiled within us. Stir what has been veiled within us. Stir what has been veiled within us. Father, forgive us for putting you back behind the veil. But I'm asking you to uncover what's been stirring in our belly the whole time. Father, I thank you that the flesh is being torn away and the spirit is being uncovered. Lead us, oh God. Guide us. Counsel us. Cover us. Instruct us. And pull us into brand new understandings, into brand new revelations, into brand new insights. Father, I thank you that every pain that we have endured over the past two years has been pointed at the revelation of the next 12. Father, I thank you that this has all been a piercing of the side. But Father, in this piercing, you said your flesh will be moved away. Let the veil be lifted. Let the veil be lifted. Let the veil be lifted. And just like Mary and Elizabeth declared that when the veil was lifted and the curtain went up, there was a performance. So I decree over this body's 2022 that the veil is moving away and the performance is being unlocked. God, come on, decree it over your own year. God, perform in our family, perform in our minds, perform in our bodies, perform in our children, perform in our money, perform in our health, perform in our prosperity, perform in our mental sanity, perform in our strength, perform in our endurance, perform. Come on, I dare you to point your decree at what your next year will see. Where do you want to perform it? I want it in my sons and daughters. I want it in our church. I want it in our city. I want it in our nation. Will you stand on your feet with me and take about 30 seconds and decree a performance from you to the world. Father, I thank you that this is not, oh God, this is not just about us waiting for a show, but you have just revealed to us that we are the main act. You're going to use us. You're going to flow through us. You're going to move through us. I dare you to lay hands on your belly right now. Father, I decree that from this belly, come on, lay hands on yourself. From this belly, from this belly will flow creativity, will flow ingenuity, will flow healing power, will flow deliverance, will flow signs, 
will flow wonders from this belly will flow prosperity from this belly will flow insight from this belly will flow prophecy from this belly will flow manifestation out of these bellies will flow rivers of living water we decree a year of flow a year of flow a year of flow a year of flow father i thank you that you have carried us through to this moment now let the curtain go up and let the performance begin in the name of jesus would you just stretch your hands to anybody around you and begin to decree over them there will be a performance there will be come on use your mouth there will be a department you got the power of life in there there will be a performance there's death in there there will be a performance death to sickness death to anxiety death to suicide death to poverty death to lack and life to more we speak life i and they are so we speak life in our 22nd year and we declare it we demand it we require it and it is so by the name of jesus give him a shout of praise if you know it's so come on 20 seconds of praise 20 seconds he's gonna use you and he gets all the glory he's gonna use you and he gets all the honor he's gonna use me and they will look at me and say where did i come from i'm from another world i'm from another place i'm from another era i'm from another age christ in me i'm a new creature all things have passed away all things have become new and it is so lift your hands may the lord bless you and keep you may you make his face oh, 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 oh. his face shine upon you may he establish you may he give you peace and may the curtain lift on your next year in jesus name you are dismissed into your performance Repatakatanamasoko, 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 Repatakatanamasoko,